that from the creation of the earth and the Garden of Eden, we find that about 2,000 years later, God is aggravated and we have Noah and the flood. Approximately 2,000 years from Noah and the flood, we now begin to see that it is time for the birth of Christ. The Bible describes in the book of Ezekiel and Daniel uh, in visions and, and dreams that we are there to interpret in relationship to the book of Revelation that it will be about 2,000 years before the return of Christ. Now, from there, we have a 1,000-year period uh, called the Millennial Reign and sandwiched in between the last days and the millennial reign of Christ is a six-year period that is called the tribulation. So where we are in God's timeline, how many of you are football fans? Right? How many of you know what the two-minute warning is in the fourth quarter? Right? How many of you know what it's like when there's 30 seconds left on the clock? Right? There's 30 <coughs> seconds left on the clock, folks. In God's timeline... We are very, very near to what the Bible describes as Jesus himself descending to just above the clouds and the trumpet of the Lord will sound and those of us who are in Christ Jesus will be caught away and carried away to heaven while the judgment of God falls upon a disobedient earth. Now, we see the rise of the Antichrist in the first three and a half years. And after that, the Bible describes the second three and a half year period as the Great Tribulation, when the judgment of God is so great that if that time frame had not been shortened, nothing would survive. And see, we are in what is referred to as the Age of Grace. Meaning that God's love for us is so great if we will simply turn from our sin to turn to Jesus, our home is going to be in heaven, Earl. My goodness, I can be right with God by the shed blood of Jesus right here, right now. There's no reason to feel any guilt. There's no reason to feel any shame. There's no reason to believe that you're not going to continue to sin because that's the nature of it. But don't use that grace and liberty as an occasion to excuse your sin. We've got to be led by the Spirit of God. We must attempt at least to walk in righteousness. And in this age of grace, God covers it all. He fills the gap. <clears throat> Now, how many of his parents have ever set a child down and talked to them? How many of you have had that same child not listen when you sit them down and talk to them? Right? How many of you have ever sat down with that child and say, I'm tired of talking to you. Now I'm going to ground you. Now I'm going to punish you. My dad had an attitude adjustment wrapped around his waist. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Right. At one point as an adult, I wore suspenders because I still did not like the sound of a bell going through loops. <laughs> it sounded like judgment has come. I, I mean, that's the sound of judgment to me. Your mom had this right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, my mom had this right. <laughs> right? So the Bible's very specific now because here's what's going to happen. In the course of the last days, the Bible describes two simultaneous things that are going to occur. On the one hand, there will be a great falling away from inside the church as the church becomes more and more religious exercise oriented until the power of God has departed and we have nothing but a club going on. Amen. It's talking about under Laodicea. He said, you think you have this and you have that, but you're naked and you're blind and you don't have what you need, the Bible's describing. The church in America today has wonderful, wonderful buildings. Yeah. Team Jesus churches in India have dirt floors, palm tree leaves. If you're lucky, there's enough sheets to lay down so that you can kneel down or sit down, men on one side and women on the other. And I mean a child does not cut up and act during the course of the preaching of the Word because they are desperate to hear it. Many of them unable to get a copy of the Bible, the Word of God, in their own language. They're ready to hear from God. Here in America, we have turned the tradition of thanking God for the food into actually thinking we're blessing it, J.J. 
Brother Mike, would you bless the food? <laughs> Never once did I see Jesus bless the food. I saw Him thank God that there was food. The food is the blessing. Amen. And that's the difference between truth and religion. Oh, and it contaminates. Now at the same time, the Bible describes a great outpouring of the Spirit of God that will lead into places that have never received the Gospel before and the Gospel will be preached everywhere in the world. Do you know that now there is a copy of the Bible in every language on earth? It is published. It is preached in every continent. In Pakistan, if you are a follower of Jesus Christ and they catch you holding a Bible, they will cut your right hand off. Then they will cut your right foot off so that you cannot travel anywhere and spread this horrible disease called the gospel. And there are men and women all over Pakistan that are handless and footless and joyfully so. Saying, what is a hand to give to God? What is a foot to give to God? What is a tithe to give to God? Mm. What is dedication to give to God? We've reached a point here in America where we no longer give our children to God. I've seen them, Jonathan. Well, I don't want to force my children to go to church. I want them to make up their own mind. Do you have that attitude about school? Do you let them decide whether they want to go to school or not? I'm making too much sense, JJ. We're quiet in here. <laughs> We're going to look in a series now of what happens in the last days. What are the challenges in here? Because the devil wants to draw away the people of God to silence the sharing of the gospel. And this is why in America today on television, you can say God, Alan Spiewak. Don't you say Jesus. If you say Jesus, they're going to cut that out. Because that's the name. That's the name that makes demons tremble. That's the name where people can only get to God. It is the only name. There's but one mediator between God and man, and that is Jesus Christ. Amen. So we see here in 2 Timothy chapter 3, beginning in verse 1, it says, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Perilous meaning evil. Perilous meaning dangerous. The perils of Penelope Pitstop. <laughs> It is perilous. Things can go wrong. We'll live in perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. There'll be covetousness. They'll want what the other has. Keeping up with the Joneses becomes the lifestyle. They're boasters. They brag. Let me tell you what I've done. Let me tell you what I've accomplished. They're proud. Blasphemers. Let me tell you, God's last name is not damn it. Mm -hmm. And if you say Jesus Christ, it depends on how you're saying it as to whether or not that's a problem. His middle initial is not H. I get so aggravated with movies. Paul, if, if, if they use a little language, I try and get away with it, but when they start taking God's name in vain, i got to shut it off, and I, I lose some good movies that way. And movies I might have watched otherwise. It's just disappointing. But I don't want to hear that. Mm. They're disobedient to parents. In the last days, the children begin to rule the house. Mm. Mom and dad begin to do all that they can to please the child because they're out working for a living and so they begin to compensate. 
We have a generation of young people who have had it easier than any a generation that has ever lived and is the most thankless. This generation, but let me tell you something. I'll tell you something about this generation. There is hope for this generation because there's some good kids out there. They've just been dealt with improperly. You don't indulge them. Right? Earl, I just wonder one time, I didn't want my kids to think that God was up there with a baseball bat going, no. 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 And I determined I'm going to say yes to as many things as I possibly can. Right? Oh, boy, have I paid for that. It started with Dad. Can Brandon come over and spend the night? <laughs> Can Glenn come too? <laughs> Can Twan come? Twan is the fat one, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> yes, he could come. How about so and so? All right. Can we go to the dollar store and get some junk? <laughs> All right. Here, here's some junk money. They come to spend the night or they stay for three days. <laughs> I own one thing that's actually mine. I have a 62-inch TV in my living room. It's an old projection style, but it's mine. And these kids took over my TV. <laughs> They ate the last ho-ho. <laughs> I go buy four bags of chips, and I go for one chip, and they're all gone. <laughs> I learned, Lady Ann, if they said, you want some junk, I'm like, yes, let me get some. I'm going to get a paper plate, get some junk. I want some bean dip. I go hide in my, you know, my room. <laughs> But I saw good kids, if you treated them with love, and a lot of them I hugged on the way in, that I discovered that they would return that love and affection. And it wasn't long before they were talking about some of the problems that they were facing. They're a generation that is hungry for the truth of the Word of God. They don't read the Word of God because they don't have the attention span anymore to do that. In 1962, the government did a study. What is the attention span of students in school? The attention span of a second grader was 22 minutes. And so they designed the curriculum that about every 20 to 25 minutes, they would switch to something else. And switch to something else to keep up with the attention span. The attention span of an 18-year-old today is less than two minutes. I sit one down and say, son, I want to talk to you. Okay, go ahead, Dad. <laughs> I, I got two ears, but I can't separate all that out. I can't give my full attention. I, no, put, put the phone down. Oh, okay. And then I have to turn it off. <laughs> Mute it. Because I'm talking, son, I want to talk to you. Ching. <laughs> This is really important. Ching, ching. You know, the text messages are going off. They don't have the attention span. Right? Read a book. Adam don't want to read a book. Watch the movie. And yet we have parents now that say, you should read the Word. You should read the Bible. You should do this. You should do that. And there's no obedience there. Right? I'm going to give you some words that are very powerful with your children. The only difference is, is you've got to actually mean them. I, my father used them. I woke up one day and discovered Jonathan Dunn. I was my father. <laughs> Why? Because I heard myself be, say, because I said so. <laughs> we are not having a debate. This is the way it's going to be because I said so. We have a generation that doesn't feed the chickens or slop the hogs or plow the fields, right? They live in air conditionings. They microwave their snacks, right? Gripe if you run out of hot pockets. Right? The Bible says that they will be disobedient to parents, that we will have a generation that is unthankful, a generation that is unholy. Right? 
میشه 